Thank you. Thanks for coming. So this is joint work with Gwinael uh, Dore, and we're going to talk about assortment optimization or assortment planning, as many of you uh, call it as well. So let's start with some motivation. So let's suppose you're running a supermarket and you need to decide uh, what uh, dry pastas are you going to show to consumers. This is an online store. And you can select potentially many different options and diff from different countries, but you need to decide which subset of, of pastas you're going to show. If you are running a wine store, for example, this is a famous in Australia, they have to decide which uh, Pinot Noirs they're going to show. In this case, this particular store uh, chose 400, uh, 742 items and they also need to decide the, the prices and the, the locations in the, in the website. So in general, in revenue management, we can think about this uh, it's a, it's a practice that uh, you need to decide the availability of products and also at what price are you going to, to put them in order to uh, consumers to, uh, to buy them. So there are two questions here. One of these, the availability, which subset are you going to show to consumers? And the other one is, at what price are you going to show to, to consumers? So the assortment planning uh, or assortment optimization is focusing only on one of these questions. So this is the, the first question, this availability question, which subset of products are going uh, to be shown to, to consumers? Uh, so the, the question is, which subset, but the, the prices are going to be fixed, right? So we are going to assume that for some we have suppliers and the, 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 the prices are going to be uh, completely uh, fixed. Uh, okay, so in order to understand this question, we need to understand how consumers behave. Otherwise, it's impossible to actually come up with some optimization. So we're going to use the basic tools of discrete choice modeling, and this is as follows. We have a, a set a C of N potential products that we can show to consumers, and faced with a subset of this, uh, uh, of this uh, set uh, C, consumers will select one of these items or actually don't purchase anything, right? So for any subset S, consumers come in, they either buy one element or they don't buy anything. So we can think about the discrete choice model as a function. This is function P that receives uh, one item X and one subset S. The item X is inside the subset S, and this function tells us the probability that the consumer will buy this element X, given that we show them the uh, assortment uh, S. So different choice models appear in the literature, and all of them can be uh, inside this, uh, this function, depending on how complicated the choice model is, this function becomes more or less uh, complex. So we're going to denote this product zero to be the no choice option, meaning that uh, if someone doesn't buy anything, they are going to buy this uh, no choice uh, option, which is product zero. All right, so the famous, uh, one of the most famous discrete choice models is the loose model, the multinomial logic model. This is characterized by a vector. And this is the intrinsic utility for each of these uh, items. And then this is the way we define the function p x comma s. And it's a very simple function, and that's probably one of the reasons why it's so uh, popular. All right, so uh, there are many more models. This is a very general model. It's called random utility. And here, uh, what we have is that each element is assigned a random variable and they can have a correlations, and when the customer comes into your store, they see a realization of these variables, and they select the one that has the maximum utility among the, the set of items that are available. So formally, we have that the probability that someone selects this item X is the probability that the utility of that item is the maximum among all the other utilities in the subset, and also the no choice uh, option. All right, so uh, what is the assortment problem? So let's suppose now that we fix this uh, discrete choice model uh, P, and now we're going to have a function that tells us the revenue for each of the items that are uh, in this uh, set uh, C. And for every subset that you show to consumers, you can calculate what is the expected revenue per customer that comes to your store, and this is actually this uh, function over here. So it's the probability that someone buys the product X multiplied by the revenue of that uh, item. And you can think about the assortment problem as finding the best subset S to show to consumers to maximize that function, to maximize the expected uh, revenue. All right, so this is a very complicated problem. Of course, there are uh, two to the power of n different uh, subsets, and it's, uh, there's a strong uh, um, non-approximation result that it tells you that you cannot even uh, approximate this under random utility models to that factor one over n almost. It's also NP-hard for very simple problems, like, for example, the, the multinomial logic with two different classes, so a mixed multinomial logic with two classes, that's also NP-hard. Uh, but there are very several heuristics proposed in the literature, and there's a lot of papers in the literature about how to approximate uh, this uh, problem. All 
All right, so uh, what is one of these basic heuristics called revenue order assortment? That's the, the, the context of this talk. It's going to be as follows. So let's suppose we have these uh, distinct values of the revenue function, R1 to Rk. Rk is the maximum. R1 is the, the minimum value. So k is less than or equal to the number of, of alternatives. Now, for each of these indexes from 1 to k, we denote this Si to be all the elements that have revenue of, that, of at least Ri. Right? So S1 is all the items, S2 is all the items except the, the cheapest ones, uh, S3 is all the items except the cheapest one, the second cheapest one, etc. And the, the heuristic is very simple. You evaluate the revenue on each of these subsets, S1 up to SK, and you select the one that gives you the most amount of, of revenue. So this evaluates the most n subsets. It's very appealing in that sense. It's also very general, because you can apply this strategy for any discrete choice model, no matter how complicated it is, as long as you are able to evaluate the expected revenue for every subset S1 to, to SK. And it also performs optimally in some discrete choice models. So for example, for the loose model, the multinomial uh, logic model, it does uh, very well and gives you the optimal revenue. So what we want to do is the following. We want to find out what is the worst case performance guarantees of this strategy. In under quite general discrete choice model. So how bad could it be if you apply this strategy? And we have these three worst case performance bounds, and we show that these performance bounds are uh, tight for these general uh, discrete choice uh, models. <coughs> and this, uh, these bounds uh, hold for uh, th th this uh, class of choice models includes as a special case the random uh, utility models, so they are even more general than random utility. So I want to mention that uh, Awad, Farias, Levy, and, and Segev independently obtain uh, two of these three bounds for the case of random utility uh, models as well. So that's, uh, that's another, another paper. All right, so that's the first contribution. The second one is to try to connect two different literatures. One of them is the assortment optimization, which is mainly in the operational research area, and the other one is the, uh, pricing and MV field pricing, which is more in the CS area. So uh, there are two problems that which are very hard to approximate, which is UDP mean and UDP rank. And we saw one of these talks uh, mention one of these uh, problems. And we show that actually these problems can be converted into an assortment problem. And therefore, uh, once they are seen as a special case of the assortment problem, we can actually uh, derive some of these bounds back and also obtain some uh, new ones. We also do this for the staggered minimum spanning tree pricing problem. So the same idea we converted to a an assortment problem. Right, so let's take a look at the examples of the results. So let's suppose we have an online store that sells uh, thousands of different products, right? And let's suppose that the prices of these products are between $10 and $20, but they are different prices from the sense of difference from each of them. Now, if you uh, evaluate, uh, perf uh, use this strategy, revenue order assortment, uh, I can tell you that you're guaranteed to have 59% of the optimal revenue as long as the consumers have some structure in their choices. And I'm going to tell you now what is the, the assumption that, that we have. So this is only valid for this class, what we are going to call regular discrete choice models. So in order to provide this class, we're going to do is an axiomatic characterization of the discrete choice models. So first axiom is very simple. The probabilities are always non-negative. That's fine. Second thing is, if you don't show the item, you're not going to get any, anyone to buy it. right? So if the x is not in, in s. The, sec the third one is saying, well, the expected demand for each customer they can come see is no, no more than uh, one, which is one, two, and three are satisfied by every description model that you can think of. But the fourth one is the one that we're going to impose now, which says that if you enlarge the set that you're offered to consumers, the probability that someone will pick one of the items that was before cannot actually increase. So if you show, go to a restaurant, and 30% of the people choose salmon when you, they are, uh, offer salmon and chicken, if the restaurant offers salmon, chicken, and beef, they are not going to have a probability greater than 30% for choosing uh, salmon. That's the only condition that we are uh, imposing. And we call this a regular discrete choice models in the economics literature of regularity is also used for that particular uh, setting. So this includes most of the models in study in uh, psychology, economics, and operations research. Uh, so one thing I want to mention is, well, every random utility model can, uh, will going to satisfy this condition, but it's not the, the reverse is not, uh, the converse is not true. 
So even for n equal to 3, Mike Ferdinand Richard found a very simple regular discrete choice model satisfying this regularity condition, but uh, it's uh, easy to prove uh, uh, using one uh, lemma about submodularity sub -modularity of the demand function of random utility models that this is not a random utility choice model. And here I have a, a list of discrete choice models that are uh, regular, and the last three are uh, quite recent, and they are not uh, random utility uh, models. All right, so, so let's go to the, 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 the worst case guarantee. So the first one is the, the simplest one. It tells you that if you apply this strategy, you get a revenue of at least 1 over k of the optimal revenue. Remember, k was the distinct number of prices in this uh, set C of all the alpha models. <laughs> I'm not going to go through to the proof, but I want to highlight that the proof, the only thing it uses is this inequality. And it doesn't, and, and a lemma coming out of that inequality, and it just takes two uh, slides. This is one part, and this is the other part, and you get the, the result. All right, so uh, the other one is uh, a little bit more complicated, but still is probably three slides instead of two. But it tells you that if you apply this strategy, this is the revenue, and you're going to get at least this amount of revenue. So the row here is the ratio between the maximum, the price of any alternative divided by the minimum price of any uh, alternative. So let's go back to our example. And we are going to consider this online store that sells thousands of products. The prices are between 10 and, and 20. Now, if the consumers follow a regular discrete choice model, we get 59% uh, at least of the optimal uh, revenue. So that's for the, the second uh, bound. The, the, the last one is a bit more uh, complicated, and it consists of first taking a, an optimal solution as a star. Now, uh, one might think, well, how uh, we're going to apply this, but actually it turns out to be quite useful, even though we require an optimal solution, we, because we can use upper bounds and lower bounds on these numbers. Uh, and, uh, so I'm not going to go through specifics, but it's, it's something that was useful to derive back uh, some results in MVP uh, pricing. All right, so uh, we proved that these three bounds are tight. And they are also exactly tight, meaning that if you multiply each of them by 1 plus epsilon for any epsilon greater than 0, they are no longer uh, true. So that's one thing. And they are also tight for the random utility model, right? So they are also, in the subclass of random utility, they are also uh, uh, tight. All right, so let's go to the, the application. So one of them is the mixture of multinomial logic. This is a very classic model in discrete choice. And there's a recent paper that uh, have some analysis on, on on the revenue or the assortment. Now, we can apply it directly our theorem because uh, the regularity condition holds very easily here in this choice model. And what we get is this, this bound, and this slightly improves uh, recent analysis uh, done uh, for this uh, particular uh, discrete choice model. So now, let's go now to the, the, the MRF pricing. I'm not going to discuss all the, the details of this, but let's suppose you have a single seller that wants to sell some uh, products, uh, the number of products is n, and there are m different types of consumers. Now, <laughs> each consumer is going to buy at most one product, and the seller's problem is to actually assign prices to all these n different uh, products. And of course, depending on what uh, the prices are, the consumers decide to buy something or not buy, and if they decide to buy something, which item to, to buy. So that's, that's the penalty. piece. So, we studied two of these problems, the UDP mean and UDP rank, but there are many others. Uh, the reason why we focus in the paper on these two is because they are very, very hard to, to solve. Some of them are polynomial and so our bounds will still apply, but we have better algorithms than the ones of the revenue order. So. so let's consider the UDP mean. I'll give you an idea of the, the, the results. So first, think about the two problems, how they are connected. Right? So one of them is the assortment problem. We need to select a subset of products to maximize uh, revenue to show to consumers. But the other one is we need to assign prices, and uh, we cannot actually take out uh, items. We can put prices very high, but one of them is price, and the other one is selecting subsets. <laughs> OK, so we connect these two. And uh, the way we connected this is that uh, we are going to uh, create a particular discrete choice model that satisfies regularity that is uh, very uh, uh, that is connect completely connected to the original problem. And the idea is that if you get a, an optimal solution here, this other solution that we make a transformation is going to be an optimal solution, and we can uh, go back and forth on these uh, two. 
So uh, first, uh, theorem is UDP mean is a special case of the assortment problem under this particular uh, constructed regular uh, uh, choice model. Uh, this next thing is what we do is that actually uniform pricing it turns out to be uh, equivalent to revenue order assumption strategy in this particularly constructed discrete uh, choice uh, model. And once we have that, we can apply back and forth our uh, uh, bounds. Right? So for example, this is a, a famous uh, bound for the uniform pricing in UDP mean, and we can get this bound uh, directly applying our third bound in, this, uh, in the revenue order assumption strategy. Now, we can also use our second bound and, and have this extra uh, uh, algorithm, uh, extra revenue guarantees for the uniform pricing, which is uh, uh, 1 over 1 plus log of rho, and rho is the ratio between the maximum valuation and the minimum valuation. In the, so finally, uh, we apply similar ideas to the UDP rank, and we gain uh, obtain back some revenue guarantees and some uh, new ones, and also the stack at their minimum uh, spanning tree pricing problem. So we're matching these tight bounds on uniform pricing in those three, uh, three different problems. So in terms of conclusion, we have studied the assortment uh, problem, and particularly the, this uh, revenue or the assortment strategy under a quite large uh, discrete choice uh, model. And we show that there's a strong connection between uh, two problems uh, that are, uh, one is about setting prices, the other is about selecting subsets, but it turns out that they are quite equivalent in a, in a more general uh, setting. And finally, I want to mention some, uh, some uh, potential uh, research about this. So one of them is first try to find other problems that actually can match this, uh, this uh, general framework of, of uh, regular discrete choice models. And the other one is to move forward in the, the choice literature and to try to understand complex behavior by uh, understanding models that are outside this class of regularity models. So I just mentioned a few here. So it's general loose model, perception adjusted loose model, and pairwise choose Markov chains. So uh, in these models, regularity axiom doesn't hold, and it's not clear how to uh, move forward in that direction. Thank you very much. <laughs>